Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joel Duggan and we are kicking off the second Friday of the LEGO Let's Chat with the UCS TIE Interceptor from LEGO Star Wars. Set number 75382 for people paying attention. You can do bang link in chat. You'll get a link to the website where you can see it. It's part of the 25 years of LEGO Star Wars collection. And uh, we did the first two bags last week which was all the internals it was all cockpit computers a lot of stickers that went on uh we also have a lot of technical stuff that went around the outside obviously this is where the panels are going to attach probably where the beginnings of the wings are going to start to attach uh, and we have a clear front and back which is cool so we're going to pick up right where we left off with bag number three and i have a thank you to send out to mind trip media 100 bits thanks for kicking off the stream very much appreciated Hope everyone's having a good Friday so far. Mine has been pretty relaxing. I've been getting up really early this week and going for a walk first thing. And then I uh, had an opportunity to just chat with a friend for most of the morning, which is great. Uh, my buddy, Chad, for those of you that don't know, Chad is one of the people that started the Citadel Cafe podcast with me many, many, many moons ago. He's no longer on the show, but obviously we're we grew up together, so we're good buddies. It was nice to catch up with him. And then had lunch. Really been enjoying the new show Sugar on Apple TV+. Plus. Not for kids, but it's a really cool kind of noir detective story, but told in modern times. And I'm curious as to where they're taking it. it just, I got, I'm three episodes in, and it's now it's taken a little bit of a twist. I'm curious to see where it goes. Don't get to see the tongue sticking out? No, I don't stick my tongue out when I do stuff like that. I do hold my breath when I put stickers on Lego, though. And that's not by choice. It just sort of naturally happens because I don't want to screw up. Take out the bright colored pieces first here. I was right in thinking that a lot of the bright colors are going to be inside. I mean, obviously it looks very Star Wars-y and gray on the outside, but I'm glad that they're able to put some bright colors in it. It makes it so much easier to put together. Friday sounds a lot more chill than mine was. My Fridays are designed to be chill, to be fair. I, I 100% um, designed the Lego Let's Chat on Friday on purpose. Uh, I feel like, I don't, think that the spawn chunks is the hardest thing that I do during the week but I think it's the thing that requires the most presence and presence of mind and like upbeat nature so we do the spawn chunks first well first thing for me on Monday morning it's Monday afternoon for Johnny uh, but we do it on a Monday and I like it like that because then it gets the big the big thing is done from the week so I don't have to scrounge during the week to try to find time to get ready for spawn chunks. It's just, it's already done. We can move on or I can move on. Now, normally I would say that the next thing in the week would be the Citadel Cafe podcast, but we have not been able to do more than one per month for quite some time. That's just my own scheduling conflicts, other adulting things that just have to happen. The spawn chunks is easy to, to devote the time to because of course, with the, excuse me, with the support that the spawn chunks gets, it's easy, I shouldn't say easy, it has allowed Johnny and I to be able to take our full work day and dedicate it to the spawn chunks, whereas with the Citadel Cafe, I have to kind of do that in my own, my own time.
I actually had Citadel Cafe stuff scheduled this morning, but one of the nice things about working for yourself and understanding, I think, what true value is in terms of your day. Um, when a friend calls randomly on a Friday morning, um, you can just answer and you can talk for as long as you want because I'm the boss. And uh, I think there's a lot that can be said for that, for that flexibility. Gone are the days where I uh, ever want to really work for somebody else. I mean, never say never. You can always find the right sort of situation, but it's definitely not high on my totem pole. Cosmic is saying that I may or may not have used the phrase, why are people putting meetings on my calendar? It's Friday. Yeah. I certainly remember when I worked in animation, there's definitely some meetings that could have been emails. I remember those. I don't miss those days. For fo folks that don't know, actually, if you're new or relatively new to the community, I, um, I worked as an animator for a little while, but quickly moved into production management. And so there was just an, a lot of meetings a lot of meetings. I actually didn't mind that gig. It just, it was a gig that I took out of necessity because at the time, and it may be true still now, uh, it was a more regular job and it paid better than being in animation, like on the actual artist side of things. Was that your job when you were building Lego with your kids, Grandpa Crafter? Was your job was nulling out the pieces, getting everything ready, and then the kid was the one assembling everything? That seems like a cool way to, to do it. That way, the accomplishment is still very much felt by, by the kid. Or I guess both parties. I guess it depends on your state of mind, I guess. I don't know that I've ever built a Lego set with somebody. It's always been a solo solo thing for me. And I guess the closest thing to like with somebody would be streaming it with, with you folks. Closest I've come to, uh, to building something with someone else. It's an interesting idea. I'd have to find the right kind of set. I think that it would be, you have to find the right kind of patience, I guess. Yes, Cosmic, you did tell me that. That's very, that's very funny. Also, Cosmic, I think I realized just now that I left your DM unread or unreplied to. Sorry. I uh, was at the computer this morning, but then I got on the phone.
These small bags are almost harder to to lay out than larger bags. All kinds of different pieces. I don't think I've got it very straight, but that's nothing new. I do have this thing. The name plate. A little cheaty. Is it cheaty or is it ingenious? Those look like a pain to lay out. There's always something. Anything that rolls around. This part of the process for me is fun until you get to the part where they roll around. And then I just can't wait for it to be over. Especially because these pieces are usually used like six or eight at a time. So like they just, they disappear so quickly. It's like, why did I even bother to lay those out? And then the completionist in me says, because reasons. Here we are. Joel, do you leave empty spots on purpose, knowing what else you have to add, or just null them and fill them in based on what's left? Uh, I sometimes leave things on purpose if I can sort of look ahead and know that I've got like a, a plate, a four plate or a six plate or something. Um, most of the times, things like that, I would consider a mistake. Uh, it's always kind of a fun game of chance and planning to see if you can get it as close to like a uniform shape as possible. Um, that's just what I'm thinking of. Um, but no. No, I don't usually leave gaps on purpose. I certainly try to... I usually go from... With these kind of sets, especially because of all the gray and black and those colors, I usually go with the black through white in that range first, generally speaking. This had a lot of very funky black pieces. Um and then biggest to smallest, and then I switch to colors and then go biggest to smallest. It's just easy for me, I think, mentally to line it all up. Okay, that I think is the last page of the last set. There's bag number three. This actually, it's a nice long book, so it fits in the shot, which is nice. Yeah, what I tell you? We're gonna be using these right away. Grab one of those. Three of these. We had someone write in to the render distance extended version of the podcast on Spawn Chunks talking about uh, the usefulness and resourcefulness of using unorthodox pieces. The last, uh, last week we built 
the interior and there's revolvers that are used to hold some of these panels like handheld revolver pieces and they were saying that that not only is that often a necessity in this email for for builders but it's also encouraged because it can be uh cost effective uh, but also add some fun surprises to the build experience which i thought was pretty cool Now we're doing the same, no, the reverse now. Two from this side and then one from the other. Doesn't help that the pieces are teeny tiny. No, no, that does not help either, especially with big hands. I like making structures like this with the big Technic pieces. It feels very sturdy. That is a very precise position. Cool. Get that wrong. Now we have a small piece that has to be assembled first. And then that gets detached there. I can sort of see where these are going to go. You can see the two socket joints here. And then you got the two balls there. So we're sort of building out the, the wing. Well, I mean, had I looked ahead, <laughs> my brain got there before the book. I didn't peek, I swear. It's cool how they're mirroring the shapes on the top and the bottom. I do prefer, I think I mentioned this last week, this book has got a lot of small steps where it's just like, one to two pieces at a time and i really like it it's a it's a much better clearer way of building a set it probably meant for a thicker book so we've done that and now we have to do it again this i'm sure will be a common theme uh, as is with a lot of ships because Usually in Star Wars, they're symmetrical. Not always, but certainly often. Yeah, there's also a couple of things at the beginning of the book. You're right. I didn't read them all at the start of the stream. I was just too excited to get building last week. Plus, I'm not the best at just like reading copy that I've not read previously. We, I do a lot of reading copy on the spawn chunks, but I've either written it uh, or I've had a chance to read it like once or twice before the show, before the live show. So it usually goes smoother. Just like anything else, you know, you're giving any kind of presentation at work or speech at school and going over it a couple of times ahead of time makes everything go a lot smoother. 
I find it helps Johnny and I ad lib as well because sometimes we don't read the news specifically as it's been written. It allows us to put our own little flavor on it whenever we have a chance. Often because the news on the Minecraft podcast is written in a way that can be um, not the most palatable in terms of like the technical jargon. So it sometimes helps us to kind of present it in more layman's terms or common language. I wonder sometimes if it's um, a combination of English not being the first language of the person that writes the change logs for Minecraft combined with or alternatively the idea that the change logs are written for internal slash for the coders or for the people that are working on it and then rather than being really rewritten for the public they're just kind of adjusted for the public because the way specifically the way that they list bugs um, the wording can be very very odd I did send Pixel Riffs a happy birthday today. I sent him a note. I haven't heard back from him, but I feel like he's probably taking the day offline. If I recall, that's usually how he spends his birthday if he can. He's usually out doing stuff. And then these get attached and this thing grows a lot larger, a lot faster. So that's the front. And then which way do these go? That way and this way. Normally when Lego does this, yeah, it's nice, slides right in there and then click. Normally when Lego does this with these colored pieces, they'll put different colored pieces for right and left. And you'll notice the same theme, like as you build pieces for each side, they'll end up being uh, those colors. That was actually loose. This is gonna be a decent size final build like they always give you the dimensions on the boxes or on the site but like that is going to be sizable because we still have like wings to put on this very cool I imagine these next steps are going to be yeah securing the wings in place Oh, mental note, don't put pressure on the cockpit. Yeah, 
in a way, because you use these Technic pieces to make this very secure feeling ship, it almost makes you wonder, you know, what what the components inside of the real TIE fighter would have been designed like. And if these kind of like crazy wing attachments and rivets and all this kind of stuff would have been feasible, like whether it's something that would have probably happened in the fighter. Yeah, sometimes the clicks will, will show up. I went looking actually for a shotgun mic. I did some research after we talked about it last week on stream. And um, most of the shotgun mics that seem to be worth their, their cost are XLR. So I don't have a way to actually use one of those yet. Uh, for those that don't know, I've been using USB Yeti microphones. This is a Yeti X from a couple years ago. And combined with some digital filters and settings in OBS, it gives me a decent sound, I find. Wings secure. On to the next. Yeah, either one or, or two shotgun mics would be interesting to have like one pointed at the surface so that you guys, you guys could hear all the, the little clicks and clacks and things. And then having another one pointed at me, but not like right next to me. Like I'm a couple of inches away from the microphone and it's not bad, but it is kind of in the way sometimes. Like from about here, see my hand? Yeah, from about here down on the work surface, I've got like a half visible mic microphone because like my left eye can see around it, but my right eye, if I close my right eye, I can't, I can't see any of this with my right eye. So I find that because of that, I tend to lean or, or slouch in a funny way at the table. So I'm trying to find ways to, to not do that. This feels, I don't know that those line up. I guess they do. From this angle, it did not look like that was all the same level. The hard part about this is going to have like not being able to actually put any pressure on it side to side because it rocks. Uh, we've got four of these. Jay Chris, hello, hello, welcome in. Dan, thanks for the lurk, appreciate it. Taking care of some visual stuff inside the cockpit with a gray, gray beam. The more Lego sets I build, the more I realize that they are very often kind of crisscrossing layers upon layers of one by um, varying numbers of plates. There's just a lot of plate stacking, I guess. Which adds to the security, I think. 
Oh, of the build. Security, the sturdiness, rigidity, I guess. Uh, why is it called a shotgun mic? Uh, I think it does resemble the barrel of a shotgun. Um, they're very they're very long and thin if you look them up on YouTube. And they also, you have to aim them. So like if I wanted to capture noise coming out of this um, Lego piece, then I would aim the shotgun mic right at it and... The cool thing is like if you were if if this was me and I was talking and then you turn the mic away it like it really trails off it sounds like you're miles and miles and miles away but this microphone doesn't have to be right up near me it can be out of shot so the idea is that they're probably it's probably also something to do with the the distance that they can be from um from the subject All right, well, that's it for bag, bag three. Bag three and four are not overly large. Uh, page 41. Cosmic Dancer, 1,000 bits. Thank you ever so much. I really appreciate that. Blast Jordan is indeed not late. You have arrived precisely when you mean to, which is right now. Oh, don't want to get caught with a piece hiding in the plastic. Pink pieces, I quit. I say that, and I think one of the funniest things about the Brickheads set is that they all have a brain, and it's always a pink piece of Lego. I'm sure the people at Lego find that just as amusing as I do. True Purple, good to see you. Are you having a good Friday? Tired from too much cake, there are worse things. I can think of a lot of other things that would make me tired and none of them would be as good as being tired from too much cake. I think you will find your woes here will, will fall on deaf ears. Ironically, I feel like the response to I am so tired, I have had too much cake, for most of us would be, oh, muffin. And you'd be like, no, there's no muffins, it was only cake.
There is no Dana, only Zul. Blast is like, I want cake now. I don't care how tired it wants. It, it'll make me. I will, I will confess. Uh, I might, I might be caked out. I, I had a very large, very chocolatey, very delicious birthday cake. Uh, at the end of April and, uh, shared it with my family, but then I got sent home with the rest, rest of it. And I ate it all. Cause I mean, as you do, um, but I, like a once a year thing for me maybe twice not a big i'm i'm a i'm a pie person i prefer pastries in that light although i have to say i mean like i definitely love a birthday cake and i i love that my sister makes it for me it's not that i i dislike that particular cake it's more like if i'm at a situation where it's not a celebration it's not special it's just like a barbecue and there's cake versus you know, cookies or, or something a little bit more, I guess on the pastry or safe, not savory, but denser side, I guess I'm going high density. Normally I wouldn't call myself a, a chocolate guy either. Like I'm not a big candy guy. Uh, I do like it. I don't nec just necessarily prefer it. Although I have to say, Dark chocolate and whiskey is a really nice combo. And that has happened once or twice. Dark chocolate, now you're hungry. Yeah, you know, I have that effect on people. If you don't want to be hungry, maybe stay away from my Instagram. Hey, the mighty Elkhorn is here. Hello, Elkhorn. What's shaking? Hope you're enjoying your Friday. Munching cheesy popcorn, waiting for lunch. Nice. For a second, I when I read that too quickly, I thought you were having cheesy popcorn for lunch. It's like, no, dude, that's girl dinner. That's not. That's not lunch. Mini packs. Good to see you. Hope you're enjoying the day. 
Is anybody taking advantage of the uh, the Minecraft uh, 15 year anniversary celebrations? There's some free stuff on, I want to say it's uh, Marketplace. I didn't notice anything for Java. Although I, I confess I haven't loaded up the Java loader yet. Also, if you haven't already, you can send uh, Pixel Riffs a tweet. Or if you're on Discord uh, on Spun Chunks, you can send send them a reply there. Wish him a happy birthday. It's kind of cool that, that he's got the same birthday as Minecraft. I feel like over the weeks that I've not done Lego, this is the mat has gotten warped somehow. It's weird, like I can feel inconsistencies in it. There's a good cape. There's a Java Twitch cape. I turn. I made sure drops were on, but when I played Minecraft yesterday, I just don't think that the. Uh, I don't think the drops were on yet. They weren't active. I didn't see them on the list. But when I stream Minecraft tomorrow, uh, my normal stream time. Oh wait a minute. No, no, that's right. Yeah, tomorrow's fine. I'm driving to my dad to the airport in the morning. So it should not affect the stream. But yeah, so one o'clock Atlantic tomorrow when I stream Minecraft, then I'll have drops on. I have to remember to put that in the uh, stream title too. Then I'll have to find someone to watch afterwards so I can get my own cape, I guess. Shouldn't be a problem because I normally raid. I raid somebody. Unless it's only today, but that I feel like it's the article that I read, I feel like there's fifteen days of celebration. I think anyway. Those pieces with the claws on them are always really hard to line up because they're just, they're not quite three studs long, but they're certainly longer than two studs. If anybody ever tries this, the mistake that I always make and what I would advise you to avoid is, is lining up your rows too close together because it doesn't really look that much different if you space things out and uh, it definitely it's, it's a lot easier to grab pieces too later on you don't end up messing everything up so much
And sometimes to go back to what Grandpa Crafter was asking, I just leave gaps because they look good and then force other things to line up and fill in the gaps. That's why not. And then other times you just, you just don't have the right layout. It just doesn't necessarily work the way that you want. So I am just a few minutes ahead of my first break, but I feel like now is probably a good time to do that because uh, we have not yet started bag number four. So give me about five or six minutes, folks. I do this once an hour. It gives me a chance to step away, grab a cup of coffee, that kind of thing. I will be right back.
have to say I should probably prepare myself for the confusion around Twitch drops tomorrow within the Minecraft community as people in my chat are expressing because uh, I have some experience with them with No Man's Sky. I know what they are. They're actually pretty cool uh, in terms of how you get them and uh, really allowed me to, to get farther ahead in that game and have more fun with it than I would have otherwise. But I can imagine people just popping into Twitch chat and asking questions about drops without even bothering to one look at minecraft.net and two google you know before they just prop into a stream for someone that they know plays minecraft and expect them to have all the answers or take the time to answer everything during the the stream you know Not a well-constructed web page. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I find uh, it very tedious. The new design of Minecraft.net is not great. Uh, a lot of the times I wait <laughs> for the Spawn Chunks community to have a link to the snapshot notes for the week. And then I follow that link directly to the changelog because trying to find the changelog now, it's like eight clicks deep uh, on the Minecraft website. It's just not... It's not great, especially when they're taking the time to like put things like Minecraft Dungeons and Minecraft Legends up in the forefront. It's just like, I don't know very many people that are playing those games anymore. Uh, taking the time to make them a huge part of your layout process and your new website feels really strange to me. I'm sure there are still some people playing, um, but I think I would be, I think I would be close if I said that, uh, not very many, relatively speaking. That actually might be the top part of the chair, you know? I think that's what it's meant to look like. This goes on that piece. That seems strange. Oh no, second, second step. There we go, that makes more sense. Oh no, it's not just you, mini packs. It's for the, the like the one thing that I go to Minecraft.net for is the you know almost weekly change log for the snapshot for the show for spawn chunks, and it's really tedious to find it now. I would imagine most of the people in our chat uh, on spawn chunks in the Discord probably get it from one of the devs. I'm just never on Twitter. I don't, I broadcast to Twitter, but I just, I don't find Twitter very constructive media platform. So I just, I don't bother reading anything on there. Every now and again, I'll check my replies and, you know, acknowledgements and stuff. But most of the time, most of the time I am not paying attention. Instagram, I consume a lot more of, but that's, that's more social, less professional. Like it's mostly friends, family, cool people that I, I like to follow. We're now getting a very narrow window of the cockpit. That's a very small, small cockpit window to look out of. I guess they'd be probably mostly using the instruments. Instagram is where you keep your dog videos. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, I follow a couple of dogs. Uh, 
if you want a really, really pretty American bully to go check out, it's Life Woof Maya, M-A-Y-A. So W-O-O-F, not with, but woof, Life Woof Maya. And uh, that's a really cool page. Very, very uh, pretty. Uh, I want to say she's a lilac try. It's funny, you know, um, lilac and champagne colored dogs, as far as the bully breeds go, were not like my top in terms of colors. I usually went, you know, either a blue or, which is like a gray, blue gray, or chocolate, chocolate tries. Uh, blue tries are nice, but they're just, they're so rare that you kind of always have your list. But I really, I find that um, the lilac and the champagne tries, uh, or even just champagne and lilac colors, not the try, but just like just the basic colors, they, they can be very, very pretty dogs. The eye color on lilac and champagne dogs um, for bullies is uh, almost like a yellow. Not as intense as like a chocolate American bully, but but certainly certainly up there. All right, we're putting a big chunk on the bottom, I guess. Trying to remember the name of the other dog that I see a lot of on on Instagram. There's a pair from Australia, Lulu and Tuk Tuk. L U L U. I think they have A N D in the username, and then Tuk Tuk is T U K T U K. And he's named after the Disney armadillo character. I don't know who Lulu's named after. I don't know if I've ever got that far. Um, and they, they post a lot, a lot. So it's not so much that everything you see from them is special. It's more like you just, you just see an absolute ton of stuff from them. Um, what's the other... Gosh, I'm trying to remember. I can't even remember the dog's name right now. Of this other person, this other dog that I follow. That's going to bother me. Hold on. They also are usually at the top of my page. Uh, Miko. And I think Miko is in Miko underscore XL bully. I'm pretty sure Miko is in the UK. Pretty sure that's the one. And I don't know if you can see that's Miko. Miko is very handsome, but it's almost like a, like a gray yellow for eyes with that coloring. I'm not sure what the rules are <laughs> for, uh, for showing Instagram and stuff on stream. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, yeah. So Miko underscore XL bully. And then life with life woof Maya. Life woof Maya is is a Canadian uh, bully. Um, she's in Ontario somewhere. Their owners are very sweet too. Hi, this is Tatum. That is uh, that's a um, that's not a bully. That's a pitbull, pitbull terrier. He's American. Uh, that's a funny account too. I like. Um, hi, is it? Is it? Hi, this is. Is that the full name of the the social media account? I can't remember. I mean, he's everywhere. They have millions of of uh, followers. So if you just do a search for Tatum 
or Tatum Dog. I'm sure you will find the right account. All right, I'm going to do four of those, two of those, two of those, two more of these, and Oh, did I have that the wrong way? I've got that the wrong way. That makes sense. And then this attaches this way. Weird. And then this gets flipped. And this is symmetrical, so it shouldn't matter. Man, some very precise measurements here. And it's one of those sets where you don't have a good safe place to put pressure. Yeah, like that just fits in there. That is really clever. Yeah. Guess I should leave it upside down. I feel like we're going to be working this way for a little bit. Yes, I know many packs. Unfortunately, um, the misguided legislation in the UK means that American bullies are restricted dogs in the UK. When it's really, the sanctions should have been brought down on the owners. And unethical breeders, but we won't get into that mess of a conversation. How this is set, set is built is how you build in Minecraft shape first and texture later. Yeah, totally. You're right. That's exactly how this set is going. Actually, I quite like the rhythm of this set. It seems to be um, more methodical, I guess. I think it's the smaller steps. This, the illustrations being um, smaller, I, or the, the, yeah, the steps being smaller in piece number, I think is making it feel more deliberate. Do we need two of these? No.
that goes like that. And then this, see, this is strange to me. Why wouldn't you show me the side that I'm putting this on? Like, why isn't it rotated this way in the illustration? I don't mind at all, mini packs. Steal the format away. You know who else you should check out is uh, Jumbo Sale, if you have not already. Jumbo Sale has done some Lego streaming. Super chill stream. And I feel like they have like a gridded mat, like a drafting mat. I think so anyway. Yeah, when they walk, uh, when they show um, dog walks with Miko, uh, when Miko's out in public, he's got a muzzle on. And I, I don't remember how the legislation went, but they, basically if you had a dog already in the UK, you could keep it, but it had to be muzzled in public at all times. Um, Miko doesn't seem to mind. Uh, and then... There was no, like, you couldn't get any new ones and you couldn't breed any. Um, but apparently, it also led to a lot of dogs being put down, which is sad. Had I been in a position here in Canada where I lived in a space where I could have a dog, I would have been waving my, my hands to say, like, hey, I'll, I'll take... I'll take an American bully that's no longer allowed to live in the UK and give them a good home. Oh, okay. Interesting step here. We're going to use these uh, red cylinders, dowels, to control the angle of these pieces once it's all put together. So these go on here. And then you're supposed to put these inside here and then push them all the way through. Easier said than done, apparently. But then they're supposed to stick out and connect there and then control the angle. So it doesn't move. That's cool. Looks good. Thank you for the shout out for gum for jumbo sale. Cosmic, I appreciate it. And then we have another one of these. like a so and then these bits go on here and that goes this way some really clever connections to get everything like attached to the fuselage Really cool.
Do you know if it was a, a pit bull or an American bully? Any packs? Where your, your previous dog was involved. That's too bad. That sucks. Sorry you had to deal with that. Spin her around. Wait a minute. Oh, we're back to being vertical. I was like, what's going on here? Uh, this. Them backwards. Go like that. Aha. Victory is mine. Oh, boo. Hello, hello. How's she going? Was it Pitbull Mini Packs? Yeah. That's too bad. Because again, Pitbulls, just like American Bullies, are super lovely animals. When they have, just like any other dog, when they have the proper, proper upbringing. Well, that's cool. Attaches sideways. When they build these little pieces like this, this combination of like three and four pieces that make like a little thing and then they attach it, you really don't know until you go to place it on the model. You really can't guess which way it's going to go. I'm guessing these top two claw pieces are going to be for the, the flip top access hatch. Bag number five, which we will do. Those were, those were small bags, so I think we can certainly have the time. Mm, 56. Question is, where is bag five? Cosmic Dancer with another thousand bits. Bag four done hype. Thanks very much, Cosmic. It's very generous of you. Have you all seen the new old-timey radio set. I can't remember if that's technically what it's called, but it looks like it's a radio designed from the 50s from Lego, and the back opens up, and you can put your phone in it and use it as, like, a phone speaker because I think it's designed to, like, amplify the sound coming out of your phone. Either way, it looks really, really cool. The colors on it are really nice, too. Is it the retro radio? Is that what they call it? I don't remember the name of it. I'm sure someone can find a link. I don't think it's out yet. I think it's June it, it comes out. Keep glancing at the screen, says Alcorn, and my brain goes, that's an oddly colored TIE fighter. Yeah. Yeah, we've got some weird colors going on, man. Ret it is called the Retro Radio. Wow. I'm surprised they would have, wouldn't have gone with something more specific. Like, they didn't call the Polaroid a retro Polaroid. They called it, like, the actual make and model of the Polaroid camera. MK50-something? I can't remember off the top of my head. MK70?
It is really fun to have these bright colors in the set, that's for sure. Yeah, pairing that with the typewriter mini packs, the old timey retro radio, I, I agree. My grandfather had a radio very similar to the one that the retro radio set. I want to say his was brown. I don't, I don't feel like it was green. I feel like I would remember if it was green, but I'm pretty sure it was brown. But that's the kind of thing that might have had an update kind of like in the mid mid 70s to go from like that 50s teal to the 70s brown. Just like all the appliances. Although I think all of my the my grandparents appliances were like that. That green color, not I mean, shag green, I guess is what it would be called. Not pine green, not mint green, like not that nice 50s green. It was more of a of a weird muted green. Trooper Bowl, your dad has a blue one. Very cool. Like Vespa blue, like that kind of powder, that powder blue. That's one of the cool things in that show, Sugar, I mentioned at the very, very start of the stream, uh, is uh, he drives a, I think it's a blue Corvette, but it's like a powder blue 50s Corvette. It's a beautiful car. I wish the weather was nicer around here for stuff like that. Any kind of like motorcycle or um, retro car, like you can really only drive it half the year. So it doesn't make sense unless it's your second vehicle. That said, I've been tempted to get a motorbike a couple of times in my life. Never pulled the trigger, but. A Roberts Ramber radio. You think that's the, the type of radio that it's modeled after? I haven't read the page. I'm not sure if they've mentioned the actual model of the radio. I feel like you've just, you've seen it in movies. You know, you've seen it in like California on like a period piece. It's the radio that somebody has on their boat or in their little surf shack, getting the weather reports before they go out surfing for the day. Apparently carpet from the 70s is not Twitch appropriate. <laughs> no Austin Powers for Twitch, I guess. No Austin Powers for Twitch. 
I can sort of see why. You get a blanket statement, everything, right? No one can have any fun because people can't be courteous adults. which is really not that difficult. At least logically. If you look at the track record, apparently it is very difficult. I've been following some political posts on platforms like TikTok and... Uh, Man, the people in the, in the comments, they just repeatedly out themselves as dumber than a bag of rubber hammers. Like, it's just, I never engage because I, that's not my style and I just don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But, oh my gosh, like, just, you know, I think it honestly might be like a Taylor Swift quote, but like, why bother? engaging when the trash just takes itself out something to that effect i'm not sure whether she was quoting somebody else i feel like it was her that i saw in an interview talking about some of the things that people have said about her online and she just kept her mouth shut and waited long enough and sure enough the the person that was doing the spewing just ended up shooting themselves in the foot because they were just being dumb just wait long enough and they'll just say something you know to harm their own career rather than somebody else's I'm pretty sure that's the point she was making. Ramblers are still in production mini packs. That's crazy. I would have thought there's no way. One step away from you can't have nice things. I think we've crossed the line beyond you can't have nice things. I mean, take a look at what's happening with AI. I don't know how how it's going to be used to improve people's lives, but right now it does not appear that that's the case. I did like the speech model that OpenAI and ChatGPT presented the other day, though. That was cool. I saw a clip online. We're getting closer to having voice assistants that actually sound like Jarvis from Iron Man, and I'm on board. That's the That's the kind of thing that I think would be really cool. Because right now, it is not what they say it is. Because I ask my, my Alexa in the living room all the time, uh, there's a command that's called, um, I, I use the command on screen. And it's supposed to be a, oh, I don't remember what they call it on Amazon. It's basically like a, a macro command that has several commands underneath it. So if I say on screen, turn on the Xbox, turn on the Roku, and turn on the TV lights, which are the, the LED lights that are behind my TV, and half the time, I should say half the time, 30% of the time, it just doesn't work. The other 30% of the time, it says, I can do that on Xbox or on the Roku. Which would, you, which would you like? It's like, but the command isn't for either. The command is for both. So turn them both on. Like, it just, it's silly. Uh, and I've made the command, and it should work. But my guess is that on screen is one of the pre-programmed commands it thinks are for the Roku, is for the Roku. And so it can't decide, but I'm not sure why on screen would be part of the default for Xbox because the Xbox doesn't have a screen. Anyway, I can also say, you know, turn on the Xbox and the Xbox and the TV will come on together because that's how my Roku works. Like because the Xbox comes on, the Roku sees that the, that the Xbox is on and then turns on. Um, I have a Roku television, by the way, like that's so people that know what I'm doing, talking about. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's a weird a really weird thing that happens and when it works it it feels really seamless and cool but then because it doesn't work the way that i want it to 60 percent of the time just it feels 
what sort of clunky you know like it doesn't feel like a smooth transition for what it's supposed to be now the command to turn everything off i use uh i think it's a star trek command i say end program which i think is what how they used to end the holodeck and that works every single time that turns off the tv lights the tv and the xbox just boom, everything gets shut down and that always works the ai assistance got worse over the last few years not better yeah i think so too I think that we'll eventually get something like that from ChatGPT. I think that ChatGPT being used for writing prompts and, you know, proofreading essays and stuff is a giant waste. I, I really feel like the, the virtual assistant from ChatGPT is going to be where it's at. That's what I want anyway. that level of consistency. This was a weird, weird bag to lay out. Lots of very odd shapes across the board. And these are just hard to not place down and not knock over. Double negative, but you know what I mean. Uh, they announced that from ChatGPT last week. Um, voice interactive AI, poised to radically change education because it can provide personalized tutoring in nearly any subject. Yeah, the ChatGPT 4.0, not zero, but for the letter O. It's called, there's a, it's Omaze or Optimize, or I can't remember what the O stands for. You're on the Apple ecosystem. You can rarely hear one or more of us shouting, for God's sake, Siri. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, barely use, I barely use the Apple AI because I find it's very slow. I've got a couple of lights in the studio here that I can use Siri to turn on and off. And I can say, turn it on. And it's like, thinks about it, thinks about it. And then eventually the light comes on. Whereas if the uh, Alexa, the Amazon uh, AI in the living room hears me correctly or executes it correctly, it's instant. Like if I use it to turn on the table lamp, table lamp comes on immediately. Almost as almost as quickly as I finished speaking. Like it's very, very quick. Um, I did notice that there's been an update, I think, for Amazon because the confirmation noise is now different. And I think I like it better. Well, that reminds me, what, do, what does everybody think about the new piston sounds? Uh, I like quieter pistons, but the sound that they chose is odd, I would say. All right, two of these. Oh, no, got ahead of myself. Bend the book. That did not go according to plan at all.
very specific. I feel like we're doing some outside texture here. That. I am all thumbs today. These pieces always give a nice click. Two fish clapping. It sounds like two fish being smacked together talking about the piston noise. Yeah, I can see that. All they needed to do was reduce the volume by like 50%. I mean, in fairness, you can do that with a text with a resource pack. Just take the sound and reduce the volume. I think it'd be really funny if someone changed the noise, just like someone whispering piston. So then every time a piston would move, it would be like piston, 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 piston. That would be very funny. Actually, that would be a really good, like April Fool's uh, sound revamp texture pack. And all it is, is somebody taking the time to record the word for whatever it is. So like, Grass block, stone. Elkhorn says the piston sound isn't that bad. Yeah. I don't think it really is. Uh... It's not terrible. Um... It doesn't sound like a piss. I mean, it sound, the thing is that I think the disconnect is that to me, it sounds like what a very modern, very sleek piston might sound like, except for that's not what a piston in Minecraft looks like. It looks like it, it should make like a ka-chunk noise, you know, like some sort of like metal moving, clanking sort of thing. It shouldn't sound like Star Trek, you know. But it shouldn't sound like a 2024 piston either. Man, the colors are wild in this particular piece today. That goes like that. Like that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces to make up what is essentially one piece, the size of like a two by two regular brick, right? And that's not supposed to move. That's just how it connects. Huh. I remember a lot of these from the Mandalorian kit. The, um, the Razor Crest, the playset. I think it was those. I think there was a lot of them in the space shuttle discovery as well, but they were white. 
they should sound more like steam mechanics. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. The pistons should sound more, more steampunky. <laughs> now the word is lost all meeting. Yep. If you really want to have a bad day, repeat your name to yourself over and over again. Even if it's just your first name. Immediately like, wow, that sounds weird. Two more of those. I'm only now just just now cluing into what this actually is. It's the uh, the front facing plate of the wing. I probably shouldn't, but I have the box like right in front of me at a shot, and I've been I haven't been looking at it. But I just now clued into what this was, and it's one of those situations where I thought, you know, like I'm glad that I don't look ahead because it's kind of nice to have these things sort of fall in your lap as you go. And this is really cool. There's a lot of really neat pieces and connections happening in this. This specific section. It's nice that we went so quickly from designing the interior to laying down some of the plates and things that are actually being visible on the outside. Like that looks very, very technical. Uh, there's unfortunately like a little uh, mold leftover piece there. Uh, but I really like this, like using the hinges to show like some sort of interior bits. I don't know if those are going to get covered up, but yeah, it looks like they are going to get covered up, but I, I like it. I think it looks cool. Yeah. Very next step mostly covers it up. That's too bad. I thought it looked like the inner gears of an exhaust or engine or something. We've got two of these. Flip that around and this connects on that way. And then we have to do it again, which I saw coming. Yeah, that's really flimsy. That's too bad. I guess those could be arced in a little bit, rotated in. Oh, no, then the whole thing moves. Yeah, that's a little flimsy. The whole thing's attached quite well. It's just that this one piece wobbles around. Going back to that issue of like not find, having a, a, a way to grip it and put pressure on it as you're assembling it. Cosmic Dancer giving a gift sub tier one to Rabelais. That is the 12 month gift subscription actually going into the sixth month. I read the wrong screen. Thanks very much, 
Cosmic. Rabelais, thanks for shouting out Cosmic for the generosity. I really appreciate it. I thankfully do not have a name that people shorten. I don't know that I would mind. Like if my name was Joey or Joseph and someone wanted to call me Joe, I don't, I don't really think that it would bother me that much. If anything, I would probably go by the shorter name. Sometimes I, people mishear and they, they think my name is Joel is, is Joe instead of Joel. But that's like, it'll happen over the phone sometimes. But there's nothing much you can do with Joel. It's about as short as it's going to get. JD would be a good nickname, but it, it has more syllables. Like it's more consonants. Doesn't roll off the tongue. I went to high school with a guy that went by JD. His full name was John David. In the UK, I bet they would go with Joe or even Jay to shorten Joel, really. I could see Jay, maybe. But for, for North America, having Jay shortened as your name, usually it's J-A-Y. That's usually short for Jason. My college roommate's boyfriend, Jason. We called him Jay. I mean, he preferred, I think that how he, that's how he introduced himself, I think. I find it tricky as an adult. I had to kind of train myself uh, when I meet people that, especially if I already know, like if I know a Matt and I've known several Matts over the course of my life, have a good friend now that's, that's Matt. Um, but if I meet somebody that is very much uh, someone that dislikes Matt and prefers to go by Matthew, uh, I have to like check my brain and make sure I don't, familiar like be be overly familiar and shorten their name out of habit because it wouldn't be on purpose i wouldn't be doing it despite their you know request it would be crap i have this other friend you know matt and i have to make sure that i don't matt matthew just becomes a real pain i don't have any kids but if i if i did i would be making sure that their names would be <laughs> Easy to say, easy to pronounce, easy to spell, not spelt something weird. Because when you give a kid a weird spelling, they're going to be spelling it out loud for teachers and anybody else over the phone for the rest of their lives. Like, how's it spelled? Like everyone else spells it. You know, keep it simple. You can have a unique name, but as long as it's a name that's easily pronounceable and, and spelled, I think is key. Before PAX, I was usually CJ. I could see that. Now we have another CJ in the community, so it's probably good that you're going by PAX. I always found that confusing because I my name is not super common. It's, it's not totally unique, but it's not super common. And at some point in my grade school days, there were two other Joels in my classroom, not just like in my grade, but like in my class of 25 to 30 people, there was, there was other Joels. And one of them, if not both of them, would repeatedly get in trouble. 
And so the teacher would just like, Joel. And I'd be like, my head would snap up from diligently doing like my math work or something. Be like, what did I do? And realize that they're not talking to you. They're talking to, you know, the other, the other Joel that was causing trouble. But yeah, it took a long time to get used to that. Rabbi, you're saying there's an army of kids named Liam. It's funny how names get popular too. You end up with a, a lot of um, a lot of names. I can certainly see there's a generation out there that has a lot of similar names. I think sometimes too people will grab like a name from uh, like a, maybe like a popular musician or uh, or a popular. Um, actor or something. Did I put those in the wrong spot? No. What's going on? Missing that. That's what's going on. Okay, I think we got there. Waiting for the Daenerys <laughs> to hit the workplace? Yeah. Oh, the people that named their kid before they finished the show. <laughs> regrets. Regrets, regrets. There's a fair amount of spare pieces that came in these few bags. Not all at once. There's only been like two or three at the end of each each run. But um, my little Tupperware container is, is overflowing. Like I, it's hard to close the lid on all the extra pieces. Like And they're like little bits, just like this kind of stuff that's left over. That feels a little bit more than they normally leave, but I guess here we are. Again, it's strange that uh, Lego has made these completely symmetrical. Normally, the different colors would account for different sides. Yeah, I did it again. I keep on pressing on these back pieces. Well, that is the shape of the, the rear. This is the backside here of the TIE Interceptor. I do not have time to get into bag six. We will have to pick this up where we left off. That's not going to stay. And bag six looks like it's going to be the front. That's fine. That's fair. Good stuff. Cosmic Dancer with another thousand bits. Thank you ever so much. Bag six has now done. Yes. Well, thanks very much for hanging out today, folks. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the support as well. Thanks to Cosmic. Thanks to Mind Trip Media for the bits. Uh, thanks for the gift subs, all that stuff. 
If you want to see more of this, you can check out the YouTube channel. It is Joel Duggan VODs. I do a Lego playlist for every year and I do a Lego playlist for every set. So if you're interested in a particular set, you can go back and watch that. Grandpa Crafter with 500 bits. Thank you so, so much. Keely Cakes is raiding with a party of 94. My goodness. Thank you ever so much. We are unfortunately just wrapping up. Uh, but we will send you on to somebody else. Uh, there probably is not someone else streaming Lego, so we're probably going to send you to somebody streaming Minecraft. So you folks want to put a uh, a suggestion in the live chat and stream, that would be fantastic. Raid, raid, action is go! Eki Draws, thanks so much for coming in. Kelly, what were you doing on stream today? Is it Kelly or Keely? Let me know. I've never seen Kelly with an EY. Food and drink. Hmm. Were you cooking? That sounds interesting. I've never done like a live cooking stream. She had to raid and run, but she is a professional cake decorator in a bakery. That's really cool, Sarah Sox. Amazing. So for everybody in my chat, if you want to go check out Kelly Cakes uh, at K-E-L-L-E-Y Cakes on Twitch to watch some professional cake decorating. That sounds like an ASMR video that I would sit down for. Uh, big shout out to uh, Kelly's community. Very much appreciate y'all coming in. Uh, I do a couple things here on this channel if you're new. I stream Lego on Fridays and we are working on the Lego Interceptor. Hi, Interceptor. This, this one is big and we were happy about that. And uh, I also stream Minecraft the rest of the time, usually on weekends, Thursday through Sunday at one o'clock Atlantic. I'm in Canada, so that's uh, UTC minus four hours for people that are overseas or an hour ahead of Eastern for anybody that's in the U.S. And I also do the Spawn Chunks podcast with Pixel Riffs every Monday, co-produce that. That is all about Minecraft. And I do the Sizzle Cafe podcast with my buddy Stephen ESC and other friends. And we talk about sci-fi and fantasy entertainment. The one that we have recorded that I have to post soon is about Fallout, the TV series on Prime. So if you have enjoyed this, then please leave a follow. If any of that sounds good for the people that just came in, with uh with kelly's raid then uh, by all means leave a follow here on the channel and you'll see more good stuff coming up um as i mentioned everything is available on the vods channel you can find that at joel duggan vods on youtube and you can um check out social media i i post when i stream on twitter and on instagram it's just joel duggan very easy to find and last but not least check out patreon if you'd like to support your favorite creators See if they have a Patreon because it's one of the best ways to support your, your favorite creators. I have one. It's patreon.com slash Joel Duggan. And you can join for as little as two bucks a month. Get access to the Discord. You get notified whenever I go live with a tag. Uh, and uh, you also get to help me stream uh, as part of my job. And I very much appreciate it. Thank you to Cosmic for all the moderation today. I very much enjoy these streams on a Friday. It's a very chill way to wrap up the week. But we'll pass you along to, I want to say, Scotsman UK, who is also a Lego fan, but they are playing uh, Minecraft, I believe. So that will be the raid for today. Uh, and uh, I think we raided Scotsman yesterday too. So double Scotsman raid, uh, but they are a delightful human. I think you'll enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And I will see you tomorrow at one o'clock Atlantic. Bye for now.